It's horrible. Look it's at how pretty. Terrifying. Oh. RGB goodness that Burn Ben it. hates. Kill it. Step on it. Hey, beautiful people, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by Joel Bryan. We're just talking in the pre-show about that VR port <laughs> for their 20 series, because Valve's like, hey man, we're going to do this uh, headset, and it's going to be great, and we're going to support it. Then Valve did the Valve thing, we're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and video's like, Okay, what do we do with that? Well, they got rid of it, unfortunately, but it was a very handy little port. It was a USB port that did display out. You could use it as a, you know, it was attached to 16 PCI Express lanes. You could use it as USB-C. It was a good time. Yeah. We don't have that anymore. I know. Unfortunately. <laughs> womp, womp. <laughs> but what we do have is a fantastic night where we get together on Tuesdays and we play some video games, too. Yeah, we sure do. And when there was a lot of fun maps yesterday, uh, we played on the stream. <laughs> there were some challenging ones, but they were still fun. And once you memorized them, you can, you know, get through them and get faster and faster because it is the summer of speed. <laughs> we have that conversation. Um, it seems like every other week, like, wait, wait a minute, this is a full speed. They're all full speed maps. What does yeah. that mean? That means it's just all go, no stop, get around them. Yeah. <laughs> fun times. Uh, I updated the page. You know, we got like 1,500 maps that we've played over the past year and some change. Wow. Come play with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Nubbin dropped like five gift subs uh, a couple of nights ago, so you might he did. Mm -hmm. be subscribed on Twitch because if you're a patron or a Twitch sub, link it up to our Discord. You got to figure out how to do that yourself. It's a litmus test of sorts. <laughs> yeah. Once you figure that out, go to Trackmania, go to the pin tab, everything you need to come hop in the server and have fun if you're looking for that group of people to get together with. We'd love to hang out with you. And another thing I did, is uh, just for funsies, I went ahead and added two-factor authentication to Interfacing Linux. So if you get a login or if you're creating Yay. a new account over there, you can set it up with, you know, the little authentication token and be like, oh, I'm extra secure. That's nice. Yay. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and hop into it for this week because, uh, uh, what was it? Yeah, last week, Reddit, right? Right at the beginning of the show. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, man, Reddit's getting locked down and all that fun stuff. And I'm like, ah. Why? Because Google's going to get all their AI data. You know, they're going to scrape it and put it in chat GPT. I'm like, that's fine. You know, I'm not against it, but I didn't like it just being locked to Google. And that got me thinking about uh, blocking AI. And you might have seen, you know, I post previously a couple of weeks ago because I had no idea. You know, Cloudflare finally, my website sit behind Cloudflare. I have paid account and all that fun stuff. They had rules to block AI scrapers. Never really paid attention to it. It was one of those things. Hey, I'll get around to it one day, right? And I'm like, uh, they made it a toggle button. I clicked the toggle button, forgot about it, logged in. It's been a couple of weeks ago now. I went to my uh, event securities. I was blown away. I was blown away. I even posted today yeah, on X hit hard. <laughs> open AI. I mean, we're talking about hit. Like open yeah. AI is like, give me that data every second, every sec, multiple times a second. Trying to get my data bits, cause an extra yeah. load on your server. That's no fun, especially if you're like, man, you know what? I don't want you crawling my information for use in like whatever machine that you have going on. And you know what? I don't blame you. But more importantly, maybe you don't want to use Cloudflare. That's fine. You should have your site behind some type of reverse proxy, something other than just like whatever host you have. Pro tip from old man Ben. But maybe you don't want to use Cloudflare. And I saw this project pop up earlier this week. Dark Visitors. This is like a super easy way because all you got to do is just, you know, most of these crawlers are polite. You know, they're not malicious. They'll respect a little thing called robots.txt. If you got a website, like, you know, I get it. Most people no longer have websites, but if you do, this will stop your data bits from getting scraped in your images and all that. Do you this, think you can handle the robots.txt? That doesn't sound too bad, yeah. does it? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> that one little text file you just got to put in your root directory. And this is going to be constantly updated. They provide an API. There's even a WordPress plugin. Like, there's no excuse not to set so this cool. up. Googlebot, GPTbot, Bingbot, Anthropic AI, whatever, Yandexbot, you name it. They got it. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> and if you don't have a website and if you don't care, that's cool too. Yeah. You know, you might not even care about like the 
the scraping or the training. It could just be the load on your system. Yeah, absolutely. No. Yeah. Oh, keep that in <laughs> mind. There you go. Now, let's talk about Netflix. Uh, the last time I, th- I saw anything from Netflix that had the coolest name ever, they open sourced a project called Chaos Monkey. Yeah, Chaos Monkey. This one doesn't quite have that name. No, it doesn't. It's still a neat name, not as cool as Chaos Monkey. But we, you know, like Ven said, you know, we have talked about how Netflix actually uses open source uh, here on LWW over the years. But I wanted to share this exciting news to our listeners. Netflix has built its own workflow engine, and now they are completely open sourcing it to not only meet the demands of its platform and encourage development, but to share you know, their secret sauce with the world. And this open source workflow engine is called Maestro. <laughs> and it was introduced in 2022 and is available on GitHub using an Apache 2.0 license, which is awesome. And uh, this actually, what it does is it affects Decisions like recommending your favorite shows, recommending new shows to watch, media management, and what works and what doesn't for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And all the data and analytics is driven by the Maestro workflow tool. And it's, I think it's really awesome that you're now free to tinker with it. <laughs> well, they've always been good about open sourcing their back end and a lot of the front end stuff, and everyone's like, ah, and like they get to deal with the DRM rights and all that. Stuff they could do browser side, like yeah. <laughs> for the longest time, I have no idea. I don't watch Netflix on the desktop. I never got upset about that because I never watched Netflix on the desktop. If I did, I'd pop it in the browser. Mm-hmm. I'm like, eh, now. <laughs> then I just grab a tablet and watch it there, and yeah, then like Chromecast yeah. it. So, in the show title, you might have noticed something. Fado, what's Fado? I've been over Fado <laughs> a million times. Maybe you know the show. Fado are the cool drivers for FireWire audio interfaces. Why are we talking about that? Because I've been working on this video. Not only have I been working on this video, I installed Fedora 40 to make this video because I wanted to get it right. See, yeah. by default, PipeWire is using also. You know what else is? That's your kernel drivers. Sitting in your kernel, you don't have to worry about it. For your FireWire interface, you plug it in. Usually it works fine, but that latency, pretty bad. In fact, it's terabad, and you need low latency for live monitoring or you're playing MIDI instruments. You got to have that. Now, thankfully, Pipewire has learned to use the cool drivers, the Fado project that's, and somewhere around, I think, version 1.404. And it's about time I gave it the test, gave it the Pepsi challenge. And that's what I did. I spent a week playing with this. Turns out there's not much to it. Not really. You got like three packages, a little performance tuning, and you got to block those also drivers. That seems to hang people up. It's really not that dissimilar to the... Jack and Fado set up. This is not too bad. A little bit of tinkering will get you a whole lot of reward. We're talking like an 80 millisecond reduction in your round trip latency. This is massive, huge, again, for your live monitoring and MIDI. All of a sudden, that vintage piece of hardware is just as good as anything you got plugged in currently. Now, I always have a verdict on anything I write on interfacing Linux. The good, it's good. You want to use it with a digital audio workstation, you got an old Firewire audio interface. Great. Plug it in. You're good to go. Use it with Outdoor. Use it with Reaper. Use it with Bitvic. The not so bad, but it's going to upset some people. I've been over it on the show, but I'm going to go over it one more time because now I have it in writing where I can say, just go read the end. Mm-hmm. Firewire audio interfaces make terabad sound cards. The idea of this general purpose device that you can use with a digital audio workstation and also as a general purpose sound card to listen to YouTube videos and all the other stuff is a relatively new invention. Firewire audio interfaces were premium. They were expensive. Now, we look at uh, the Fire Studio Mobile I used in the video as an example. Adjusted for inflation, that thing was a little over 450 bucks when you bought it. Now, the top of the line Titanium Extreme H Super Hi-Fi Sound Blaster card the most expensive thing Sound Blaster made, the ultra premium model, that same year was 180. So no, yeah. you didn't go <laughs> spend $400 for a Firewire recording interface to listen to your YouTube videos. You had a sound card 
to do that. And that's how these were designed from the ground up. So the reason I say this is quite simple. If you want to use a FireWire audio interface with a digital audio workstation while playing a YouTube video, while listening to Spotify, and you're on a Discord call, expect some weird ass kids. It's going to get squirrely. It's going to do weird things. That said, this is not a Linux issue. This is not a Fado issue. This is not a Pipewire issue. They do weird stuff on Mac OS. They do weird stuff on Windows. They were never intended to be used as sound cards. They are called recording interfaces, not recording interfaces, but also some YouTube and other stuff. <laughs> Keep that in mind. And if you don't, feel free to complain like people have been doing. I've been trying to tell people this for the last 10 years. They don't listen until they experience it themselves and they go, ah, and I'm go, well, that's that. Love to see. Joe, let's talk about alcohol. <laughs> Wine 9.14 is out. <laughs> we got to talk about some booze. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's uh, favorite little glass tipped over to the side because Wine HQ, what Jill said, 914 is yeah. out. 20 bug fixes, but there's uh, two in here. Got my attention, everybody. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I, they just stuck out. I, I'm just reading through it and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Bug 54,735, AOL, America Online Desktop Beta, fails when installing .NET 4.8, followed by AOL 5.0 installation fails. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because I just got to imagine somebody is testing and reporting these issues. Yes. And there has to be a reason, right? Yeah, You would think absolutely. so. You would hope so. You know, I just want to imagine, you know, in my head space, <laughs> That there's some critical system, some critical infrastructure that was developed in the 90s where a AOL was just omnipresent on every PC. It came with Windows and it used something provided by AOL back then that Wine uh, is having to deal with in 2024. I don't know. That's just all theory. I'm like, I want this to make sense. And I know somebody <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> smarter than me or somebody involved within the sound of my, or maybe you know somebody. Leave me a comment on this YouTube video going, all right, this is why, for real. Like, this is why we yeah. got to do this. Because, like, my <laughs> other option is there's the one guy puts in an AOL CD and sees if AOL 5.0 can install. A couple other fixes in this one, though, Joe. Yeah, there are uh, lots of gaming fixes, including one for an ancient OS, Ubuntu Bionic 18.04 LTS. <laughs> there's lots of gaming fixes for it with uh, Wine. 9.14, including fixing the WoW 64 emulator compilation failing and multiple games failing to detect audio devices like Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Conviction and the I Am Alive survival game. The original yeah. Wine Project doesn't get a lot of love, like it because it's not new, it's not flashy, you know, yeah. it's not doing the super cool stuff, but it's doing the important work. Mm -hmm. it is that that is going to be your windows compatibility layer for even windows in 20 years you know if you're going to be trying to yeah. run a game from the 90s in 20 years you're not gonna be able to do that on a windows machine i don't know maybe you can maybe you can you'll just have to pay the extra license for your windows subscription and then maybe you'll be able to do it but that's a different topic uh excellent work everybody involved in the one project keep it up yay um you're doing the flying spaghetti monsters work and we're Absolutely. all benefiting from it this is a Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, but it's a really, really beautiful, uh, fancy mini PC case for the Raspberry Pi 5. It's called the Pi Ronman. And we've talked about these uh, cases in the past for earlier versions of the Raspberry Pi. And it has a very sturdy aluminum case with a clear acrylic side, NVMe M.2 SSD support, oversized fans with heat sink and RGB LEDs. And the case also includes a mini OLED information display, a power button, two full-sized HDMI ports, a micro SD card slot, an AR receiver for media center applications, and an external 40-pin GPIO header. So you can access that header easily on the Raspberry Pi 5. And it comes as a kit that includes all items needed to build it, including an assembly guide, a hex screwdriver, a tower cooler, acrylic plates, and screws, et cetera, et cetera. And the case is $79.99 on the Sun Foundry store. 
$67.98 on their AliExpress store and $79.99 on Amazon. And it looks really easy to put together. I watched, actually, there's a, an Amazon video on how to put it together. So well, that was really helpful. And it's, it's just so nice to have a little Raspberry Pi 5 case that's made to look like our modern big boy PC cases. <laughs> it's so adorable. And it's got RGB. That looks more like a half tower. <laughs> where, 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 where's my full tower at? <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, wow, mini, mini, mini as they come. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's got that little LCD on the front. You know, it's got the SD yeah. card reader. I mean, it comes with a heat pipe uh, heat sink that you can put yeah. on there, you know. Like, this is, this is like, this is the mm -hmm. weirdest cosplay I've ever seen. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is a Raspberry Pi cosplaying as, like, a uh, small form factor tower. Uh, with two fans in the back. I mean, it all fits, and there's plenty of parts. And it. it's good that it comes like the NVMe, and there's that little ribbon cable that I dislike so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there, and like it'll tell you how much RAM you have, your disk space, your CPU. Like it, It's a cool piece of uh, kit. I thought I'd give it a mention. I think our theorist also put it in our show suggestions a bit yeah, later than did. we did. Yeah. But um, he took a look at it as well. <laughs> But the only problem with all of this and all of these screenshots, oh no, well, there it is. Look at it. <laughs> Let's look at Ah, it's horrible. Look it's how pretty. Terrifying. Ah. RGB goodness that Burn Ben it. hates. Kill it. Step on it. Swat it. Oh, uh, and I'm sure it works with OpenRGB as well because it's, it's made for Linux. <laughs> oh. It's truly an unholy invention. <laughs> oh, bunch of measurements and stuff. Everything's going to be linked. Uh, this is at CNX Software, full write up. Go check it out. The, the yeah. only problem I have with this um, is, like a lot of you, and I'm never going to bend on this, I'm never going to change on this, is the entire time, all of the screenshots was with the computer case on the desk. What's wrong with you? Computer <laughs> cases go under the desk. Yeah, so we, you don't get vibration, especially if you're, you're doing streaming or podcasting like me and Ven are. We can't have that computer on the table. <laughs> Why are you going to waste desk space? Yeah. <laughs> Why? I, I see that in screenshots, man. I was watching um, everybody's favorite, uh, uh, what is it, Linux tech tips from Linux himself. Um, yeah. They had a video <laughs> yesterday, like, reviewing their employees' uh, yes. like, <laughs> there desktop were setups. setups. Yeah. <laughs> every, every single one of them had a tower on the desk. I'm yeah. old. You can get off my lawn. <laughs> That's fine. We can agree to disagree. You know what? We can still hang out. We can still play Sonic the Hedgehog together. That's not a yeah, problem. Yeah, we can. But I think it's silly. Like, I thought it was silly in the 90s when I went to somebody's house. And I didn't like it in the 80s when we had them on the desk. You remember the desktop PCs? Yeah. The actual, yeah. When yeah, you put the, the monitor monitors. on top. And I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> I didn't like that, man. When the, when the towers started showing up, I'm like, yes, I can get on my desk base back. Don't have to worry about the noise. And then again, it would look absolutely silly because I have one of these ginormous um, Corsair full-size, like full, full-size towers, not what, yeah. you know, it makes me extra grumpy when I search for towers. I'm like, I need an EAT EATX for my Threadripper full-size. I'm like, this is full-size. Like, son, that ain't full-size. <laughs> um, yeah. Not by a little bit. I, I, I have an old full, beige full-size one right, right here. <laughs> Right. And like that, that, this is my thing. Like this tower comes up yeah. above my knee. It's yeah. full size. You know, you put an mm -hmm. EATX motherboard in there, you got plenty of space <laughs> left. Yeah. Um, which is also a problem because there is a chasm between the front fans and where the motherboard is, which is good. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, this is a very cool, this would be a great little project for you if you were looking for something to do. Maybe you get a Raspberry Pi 5 and you're like, I've been waiting for a case. There you go. You got kids just to keep them busy for a weekend and like they'll learn yeah. something too. You know, this, think of this as like the old Heathcats electronic stuff. Like they'll plug stuff in. Absolutely. <laughs> low voltage. They're going to smoke anything. And even if they do end up smoking something, it's just Raspberry Pi. You get another one. Not a big deal. And then teach them how to make it blink. A small form factor, full size mid tower. There we go. That's what we're going to start selling on the uh, Linux yeah. Gamecast <laughs> there <we> go. store. <laughs> Speaking of Linux Gamecast stores, I'm not, not joking. We got one of those. Uh, if you want to uh, kick us some yeah. coin, make the show possible, keep us ad free, live and independent, I'd appreciate it. Head over to Patreon. There's a link on 
Linux Gamecast, and there's a link under the video, but we got LibrePay, PayPal, Bitcoin, we got Amazon, Wishlist, you want to pick us up something? Hey, we'll give you a hug. But we do have a merch store where we have um, yes. things like stickers. Hey. Yay. T-shirts, which Frank's wearing. Hmm? He's got on a... Obey. Yeah, it, my, <laughs> and it looks vaguely sim similar to the IBM font face with a, just a blue hat over it. I don't. There's no connection to anything there, but it's a great T-shirt. <laughs> well made, nice and thick. Not cheap, uh, relatively inexpensive. Don't make anything on the merch, really, but it's just like, hey, if you're going to advertise stuff for us, I'm like, I want you to get the best stuff for the lowest price possible. And my eyes roll back in my head when I see like $40 t-shirts, and I'm like, bro, that ain't cool. But <laughs> if you do become a patron, uh, get access to our Discord, get live and uncut series, but we don't keep that behind a paywall forever. It's just you get it a week before everybody else does, but you do get it in uh podcast format you get the show linux gamecast weekly you get a pre-pre super shows and a bunch of extra bonus things including a downloadable version of this video that i handmade i i i sweat over the handbrake at the end of uh, every wednesday and give you a custom version to put up <laughs> to download and it's not too big you know it's usually like between 900 megs and a gig it's, it's nice and tight but it's nice and high quality because youtube video quality is not that great every now and then we'll get like a vp9 encode of the video from youtube Mm -hmm. It's not bad. I'm like, hey, that looks like what I sent you. But then we get the um, AVC1, which is not AV1. And I'm like, oh. So roll those dice and some early access stuff I like to put up to get everybody a little bit of a snack pick of what's going on. We do appreciate your support. Pop in our Discord. Come say hello. Come watch us live. And uh, yeah, go uh, get your creativity on i don't know man yeah. like have some fun with linux this is all about having a good time people get so serious and hung up about these things man everybody tries to get their own little camps i'm like Bruh. like we're all here together we're all tinkerers we're all yeah. nerds we're all hackers we got it like <laughs> the only people you don't want to get along with in the linux and open source people community are the people who don't want to get along with yeah that's yeah. it exactly. just leave them alone all right beautiful people Time to get out of here tonight. Let's roll some credits. <laughs> Keep those Linux penguins marching. Thank you to our advisors, Omegas and Artharin. And our executive producers, Barbrant, Scott M, Atomic, Drummer, Eshep. And our Chicago Kicks People level, Empty, Blasphemia, Super Dust Out. <laughs> and our sea monsters, Mark, DSMG, Joe, Dirty Dean, DeKresny. <laughs> and our Death Notes. Root Turnover, Mirror PPC, Ogi One, and our Chairlings. Oops, <laughs> I said Mirror was a Death Note. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Bye -bye. He's in the Chairling. <laughs> See you next week. Okay, <laughs> love you all. <laughs>